Hi, my name is Abby Lynch and I'm the Teen Services Librarian here at the Brookfield Library, here for another week of Teen Book Talks. This week, we're actually doing all tween books from our tween collection. Um, our tween collection is targeted for ages 10 to 14, um, that kind of middle school age where you might be reading some stuff from the children's section, some stuff from the teen section. So we pull out books from both sections um, that are geared towards those ages from all different genres and um, categories. Today, um, all of our tween books that I'm highlighting today are all kind of spooky, creepy horror books. So that's the theme today, um, spooky tween books, and I will get started. The first book is The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. And this one was actually a book that we had just done recently with our middle school book club, and everyone in the book club liked it quite a bit. <clears throat> Corinne Lemaire isn't afraid of anything, not scorpions, not the boys who tease her, and certainly not Jumbies. She knows that Jumbies aren't real, they're just creatures parents make up to frighten their children. But on All Hallows Eve, Corinne chases an agouti all the way into the forbidden woods. Those shining yellow eyes that follow her to the edge of the trees, they couldn't belong to a jumbie, or could they? Corinne begins to notice odd occurrences after that night. First, she spots a beautiful stranger speaking to the town witch at the market. Then this same beauty called Severine turns up at Corinne's house, cooking dinner for her father. Danger is in the air. Sure enough, bewitching Corinne's father is the first step in Severine's plan to claim the entire island for Jumbies. Corinne must call on her courage and her friends and ancient magic to stop Severine and to save her island home. That, again, is The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste, and it is available as an ebook on Hoopla, and it's the first in a series, and books two and three in the series are also available as ebooks on Hoopla. The second book I'm going to talk about today is actually a 2021 Nutmeg nominee for the middle school category, and that is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. When 11-year-old Ollie finds a disheveled, weeping woman by the river threatening to throw a book into the water, she doesn't think, she just acts, plucking the book from the woman's hand and running away with it. As Ollie begins to read, she finds herself entranced by a creepy tale, Small Spaces. Set on a farm hundreds of years earlier, it's about a girl, the two boys who loved her, and a peculiar deal struck with the smiling man, a sinister specter who grants your most tightly held wish, but only for the ultimate price. Ollie is still reading the next day on a school trip to a local farm with a haunting story. There, Ollie discovers not only that the farm is run by the woman whose book she stole, but also the graves of the very people she's been reading about. More alarming is what happens on the way home. The school bus breaks down, forcing Ollie's teacher to return to the farm for help, leaving his students alone with the oddest bus driver Ollie has ever met. The driver warns Ollie's class that someone or something will soon come for them. It's at this moment Ollie receives a chilling message on her digital wristwatch, which had been broken for months. The watch suddenly spells out, RUN. As night descends and scarecrows in the surrounding fields seem to crowd close, watching them, Ollie thinks the watch might be right. Joined by only two of her classmates, Ollie takes to the woods with one last word of advice from the bus driver ringing in her ears. Avoid large places at night. Keep to small. And with that, a deliciously creepy and spine-tingling adventure begins. That is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden, which is available as an ebook on the Libby app. The next book I'm going to talk about today is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Another spooky cover. Ever since Cass almost drowned, okay, she did drown, but she doesn't like to think about it. She can pull back the veil that separates the living from the dead and enter the world of spirits. Her best friend is even a ghost. So things are already pretty strange, but they're about to get much stranger. When Cass's parents land a gig hosting a TV show about the world's most haunted places, the family heads off to Edinburgh, Scotland. Here, graveyards, castles, and secret passageways teem with restless phantoms. And when Cass meets another girl who shares her gift, she realizes how much she still has to learn about the veil and herself. And she'll have to learn fast. The city of ghosts is more dangerous than she ever imagined. And that's 
City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab, and that's available as an audiobook on Hoopla. And I think I might use this for the summer reading challenge of reading a book that's set in a place you want to visit. I've actually visited Edinburgh before, but it's one place I would love to go back to. And it is a very creepy kind of spooky city. They do a lot of ghost tours there. So that's kind of a fun detail about this one. Maybe that's the place you want to go. Maybe you want to read it for one of your challenges. The next book is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. Oh, look at these end pages. They have these like, all these great silhouettes on them. There's like a pilgrim cap, very cool. And cobwebs. You can't have a spooky story without some cobwebs on your book. Prosper is the only unexceptional Redding in his old and storied family history. That is, until he discovers the demon living inside of him. Turns out Prosper's great, 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 great something grandfather made and then broke a contract with a malefactor, a demon who exchanges fortune for eternal servitude. And weirdly enough, 800-year-old Alistair isn't exactly the forgiving type. The fiend has a reawakened with one purpose, to destroy the family whose success he ensured and who then betrayed him. With only days to break the curse and banish banish Alistair back to the demon realm, Prosper is playing unwilling host to the fiend who delights in tormenting him with nasty insults and constant attempts to trick him into a contract. Yeah, Prosper will take his afterlife without a side of eternal servitude, thanks. But with the help of his long-lost uncle Barnabas and his daughter Nell, a witch in training, it seems like Prosper has at least a fighting chance of ridding himself of Alistair before the demon escapes and wreaks havoc on his family. Little does Prosper know, the malefactor's control over his body grows stronger with each passing night, and there's a lot Alistair isn't telling his dim-witted, but admittedly strong-willed human host. That's the dreadful tale of Prosper Redding, and that's available as an ebook on Hoopla. All right, our last book today is another one that I really love. I can be kind of um, a chicken when it comes to s scary books, but this one was just right for me. Um, it was scary, but it was like really good and page turning and I wanted to finish it even though I was really kind of scared. And it's Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. I love the font of the title on the cover there. Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. Harper Rain doesn't like her new house from the moment she steps inside. It makes her skin crawl and her hair stand on end. There's an energy to the house that just doesn't feel right. There are rumors that the Rain family's new house is haunted. Unexplainable events and tragedy seem to have befallen every family who's lived there before. Harper isn't sure she believes those rumors until her younger brother Michael starts acting strangely, throwing dark tantrums and alienating the family. Is Michael being a normal kid, or is something more sinister at play? The whole atmosphere gives Harper a sense of deja vu, but she can't remember why. Harper knows that the memory she's blocking will help make sense of her brother's behavior and the dangerous sensation she feels in the house. But will she be able to put the pieces together in time? That's Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. And it's available as an ebook and an audiobook on Hoopla um, and it is in a series and the second book in the series is also available as an audiobook on Hoopla. So there you have it. There's five spooky tween books for you to check out. I'll put all of the information in the caption and in the, um, the email and um, also I'll link to the catalog so you can browse the tween collection. Um, maybe uh, it's easy when we're open and in person because you can look for the orange tape on the spine, but it's a little harder to browse online. So I will put a link to the catalog right in the caption for you. All right. Well, I hope you have a wonderful week. Have a nice holiday weekend and we'll be back next week with more teen book talks.